at Blaine's Meteorites checking out a new stone. Alright, so we got the XRF going, and what it's doing is hitting the rock with x-rays, and it causes the elements in it to fluoresce, and based on the frequency of that return fluorescence and the, the, the strength of it, it tells what elements are in it and what concentration. See, right now, we should be, if this were a real meteorite, given that the iron content and all the rest, we should be seeing 0.4 to 2% nickel, something in that range, and we're seeing none. But uh, I'm going to let it go to the second beam here in another few seconds, and we'll see what we got for the major you know, inclusions. And I'm guessing we're going to see quite a bit of magnesium and a bit of aluminum. There's, there's the aluminum, 13% aluminum. A little bit of, now it's going to change. The aluminum and calcium, and some of these lighter weight ones, are a little bit hard for this thing to see. But you've got calcium, aluminum, and magnesium. So you've got you know, aluminum silicates, uh, you've got feldspars in there, you probably have some, you may even have some olivine. So it'll be done here in another two seconds, and we'll scroll down and see what other elements that are off the end of the chart here are. Let's see if I can get those now, sure. And here's silicon, 20%, so that's, you know, so yeah, unfortunately it's a, 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 a terrestrial igneous rock, and it's probably a basalt that has, you know, olivines and pyroxenes filling the, the holes in between things, but it does have quite a bit of magnetite in it, which is not all that uncommon for basalt, but it is an interesting rock. The shape and coloration is enough that I would have picked it up if I were out in the desert and tripped over this. Yeah, uh, shape and color. Yeah, absolutely, right? yeah. So, uh, with the, it has no nickel in it? No, no, no. So that means it's not a meteorite, unfortunately. The only type of meteorites I've ever run into that don't have nickel would be like a moon rock or a Mars rock. Yeah, and those have completely different iron contents and manganese contents. Your manganese is way low for any kind of meteorite. So and your iron's way high. I mean, most meteorites have, you know, 18, 20 percent iron. You're at 28 percent. So this definitely has a lot of, you know, magnetite and other stuff going on in it. So is it going to be a lunar or Mars no, rock? No, the chemistry is completely wrong for either of those. Your iron's too high, your manganese is way too low, uh, and there's a bunch of other things. Your magnesium is way too low. Uh, calcium probably okay, but uh, yeah, you're, you're not. There's n I've run many thousands of meteorites, and there's not any meteorite that has this kind of chemistry. It has too much chemistry. No, it just doesn't. It has the wrong chemistry. <laughs> you do an FEMN on it, which is an important ratio. You got 28 point. 162 divided by MN.069. You've got an FEMN ratio of 408. A, mo a moon rock would have an FEMN <laughs> ratio of like 60. You know, and a, and a Howardite would be like 30. So, yeah, you're just, you're, and even a stone meteorite has an FEMN ratio of like 50. So, yeah, you're just, it's completely terrestrial, unfortunately. This is a neat looking rock, though. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. But, yeah, I mean,